Hey everyone, welcome to day seven of Vlogmas 2019. I am so excited that you're with me today. Today we are talking about Alpaca Barns. Um, early on in Vlogmas, day one or two, I forget, um, a viewer had asked the question about alpaca shelters. And so I thought I would show you my shelters. I have two of them, one for the girls and one for the boys, and they're very different. The girls' barn that I'm standing in right now um, was already here when I bought the property. The boys' barn was built later for them. Um, so I'll talk about minimal shelter needs that alpacas have, and then kind of the details of each of my shelters, what I like about them, and what I wish was different. My favorite part of the girls' barn is this lean-to. Love it, love it, love it. Now, the property that I have was originally designed for horses. Uh, this was the only building here at the time that I got it, and of course it was designed for horses. Um, the lean-to alpacas love because they prefer to be outside. Everyone's outside. <laughs> um, unless it is some kind of storm um, or extreme weather, they prefer to be outside. They will sleep out here. And they, no matter if I have anything under the lean-to or not, this is where they prefer to be. They will only go inside if there's something that they want in there, like alfalfa or treats or some kind of food, um, but also in extreme weather, whether it be super hot because I have a fan in there, or it's some kind of blizzard or thunderstorm or something like that. Alpacas do not like water on their head. They don't like being in the rain. The mist they don't feel so much, the rain they absolutely do and they don't like it, so they'll go under the lean-to at least. Um, but the yeah, extreme weather, they'll go inside. For food, they'll go inside. And I think, as I said in a previous day, I use the lean-to to feed the primary food for them, which is their hay. And you can see where I have one there for the girls. This one over here is really for the boys that I have here, but it's situated in such a way that the girls can access it too, which is great because that's a lot of hay for only four <laughs> alpacas, the four boys. And I'll alternate putting a bale here and here. So you can see when that one gets low, the next time I bring one will be here. You can still see the remnants of the last one that was there too. Um, what's nice about this is the bale is protected from the weather. Um, a disadvantage of feeding them in this way is that they waste a lot of hay. Uh, <laughs> they're messy eaters. Just messy. So a lot of that hay falls to the ground, but you can see a uh, blessing there is cushed on that hay. It just turns into bedding. And at night, that is where they actually prefer to cush. Uh, especially this time of year, being December, it's cooler. The nights are very cool. They're going to prefer to sleep on that hay rather than out here on the dirt. And it's because the hay helps provide some insulation and some warmth for them. Um, in the middle, they have chosen to create a poop pile. And that's one reason why I try and feed the bales where I do because it's away from here. The poop pile does not expand that far. Try to keep it con concealed to a smaller, smaller area here. So... For whatever reason, alpacas like to poop where they shouldn't. Like, keep the lane too clean so y'all have more places to sleep. But no, they don't think that. They don't think that way. Let's go inside. Yeah, bud. It's only temporary. <laughs> Remember accent? Yeah. Okay, so in here you can see I have three stalls. I guess first I should say... The end, the space for the alpacas begins here and goes to that side of the barn. The inside of the barn is 60 by 30 feet. They get a little over half of it. Um, within that space, I have three 10 by 10 stalls. Um, these were already here. They were designed for horses, so they're very strong. Um, there's even, let's see, all the way around it has you know, this to protect the, 
the sides of the barn from horses, the, the kick of a horse, but that's not necessary for alpacas. Their, their kick will not <laughs> harm your, your uh, structure. Um, so I really liked this for the stalls. When I came and visited the property before I bought it, um, I was very excited to see that these were open stalls. Very important. Alpacas, even when they're isolated, they need to be able to see other alpacas. They're strongly herd oriented. And if they feel like they are by themselves, alone, they will stress out. You know, that's why Accent, when I walked in, he was like, hey, I'm over here, let me out. Not yet, bud. <laughs> but see, he's in a place where he can see alpacas through that doorway. And actually through the doorway that I walked in just now, he can see them. All those animals come in here periodically. The boy's water is inside. They have to come in for that. So he gets to see other animals. If this barn had the, um, the solid half walls, as some horse stalls do, I would not have chosen this place because I would have had to redo all those stalls to make them appropriate for alpacas. Um, if Accent was in a stall with solid half walls and he's cushed like that, he's not going to see anybody or hear, you know, like he's going to definitely feel isolated and that's going to be counterproductive for when you're isolating them for health reasons and that kind of thing. Um, what is nice about these is that they're very tall, um, which means I can put my intact boys in here for, you know, whatever reason I may be treating them um, for something or whatever the circumstance is. Even if they get excited about the females in here, they can't get to them. They can't get high enough. They can't jump that. Um, so it's worked out really, really well. Um, it's also worked out great for my herd health days for the girls. I just put them all in these stalls, and they're in you know small space, so one by one. I can give them shots and all that type of thing. Very easy. Um, oh, Having storage space, super, super important. Now, you may or may not have a tractor. Okay, so I'm not trying to show you my tractor, really. <laughs> um, I've had alpacas for seven years. I've only had a tractor for one. So for most of those years, I was doing stuff with my car, because that's all I had in the beginning, then with a pickup. Um, I've done a lot of things by hand, just labor, just muscle. Um, not fun, so much better now that I have a tractor to help do stuff. Um, but before the tractor, I would use this area to store alfalfa or small square bales of straw, that kind of thing. Um, behind the tractor, I have a lot of fencing um, and various things, um, more tubs to feed hay and stuff like that as I need it. This barn came with a tack room. Um, and I know I just keep random stuff in there. My halters are in there, um, kind of stuff like that. Um, pretty, pretty basic. As for what I wish was different with the girls' barn would have to be the doorway that they use. This was the only opening when I bought the property. Um, it does have like a a door that's half, like you could have it half closed or all the way closed. Um, and I mean, 95% of the time, maybe 99% of the time, it's open. It's kept open. But the disadvantage with this with alpacas is if you have one of them standing in the doorway or one of them who decides to cush in front of the doorway, it blocks anyone else from going in or out. That becomes an issue when the weather is bad, you know, winter right around the corner, storms and all that stuff. If someone's cushed or if somehow blocking the doorway, then that leaves animals outside who'd like to be inside. Maybe they get too cold, maybe they get too wet. Um, they just don't get to be where they want to be, right? You got people block or an alpaca or a llama block in the way. So I wish. I had a bigger opening that was more customizable to um, weather, different times of year, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I would change the width of the opening, the type of the door that's on it. 
Um, to what exactly, I'm not sure, because I haven't tried a diff lots of different styles, but this one on its own is problematic. Over here, we did create another door because, uh, well, for the very purpose I'm using it now, I have a separate group in here for separate reasons, and that door gives them access to outside where I um, gave them, you know, access to a bit of the lean-to. They could go outside, and now the group that is over there has access to a little side pasture. Well, it's kind of more of a dry lot. There's not really anything growing there for them to graze on, um, but it's more space to walk around and just kind of... He's still learning. He just learned he couldn't get out. That's what that noise was. He tried to jump over the door or the gate of that thing. Yeah, he's learning. Something else I would improve that I would do to this barn, and that's in the plans, is some kind of airflow in here for the summer. Something you can open for the summer and close for the winter. Um, in the summer, this barn can get just awful, awful hot. Um, I do have a fan here to help them when they're in here. But uh, airflow, airflow would be nice. Um, I know there, you know, there's things you could put up on the ceilings. There's things you could put, you know, high up on the walls or on the ends. Um, that's something to do in the future, um, and that I wish had already been here. But some kind of airflow um, that you could customize to different types of the year. Also recommend that. I just realized it was what was going on. You had everybody coming over to get water and accent bullying him. Well, sorry, I gotta close the gate. We will just change where the water is because that is not acceptable. Okay, so now I'm back in the boys' barn. Um, on my way over, I, I walked over from the girls' barn and so I was thinking, you know, Something I really do like about the girls' barn is the space. I like that even though the girls' herd is 19, like that's a lot of animals, that barn is perfectly, let's say, adequate. There is enough space in there for everyone to fit and not be in the way of one another. Right in the middle of the room is their poop pile that they've created. Um, you couldn't see it because I put down fresh bedding today, so it was all covered up, but it's there <laughs> in the middle, and even though that is there, there's room for everyone to cush all the way around to be in a dry, comfortable place. Um, so under the circumstance where they all want to be in there, there's plenty of room. Now that we're in the boys' barn, let's talk about this. All right, well, the barn is enclosed right now, um, but essentially it is a three-sided shelter and, with a lean-to. That's, that's all it is. Minimally, minimal shelter that you need to provide for alpaca, alpacas and llamas is a three-sided shelter because there are times when they need to go into a shelter. Um, but depending on where you live, three-sided shelter may not be enough. When we built this, I knew that I really wanted to lean to. I knew that that was very valuable. The very first property that I used here for my alpacas was a barn, but no lean to. And from that experience, uh, you know, and learning about alpacas, I realized I really wanted to have a lean to for them, which is why I was so excited when I found this property and what turned out to be the girls' barn had a lean to. When we came to build this place for the boys, I wanted to make sure there was a lean-to on it. And this lean-to actually comes out farther than the girls. It's 15 feet deep rather than the girls being 10 feet deep. No, maybe the girls is 12 feet deep. Okay, so yes, minimally, I would recommend three-sided shelter with a lean-to. Depending on your weather environment, you may need to do something like I've done, and that is enclose, enclose it in the winter. Let's go on inside. Now you would have seen this the other day. The first couple of winters, what I did was I just enclosed the main 
barn, the three-sided shelter part of it. And I had the, the tarps come out to about here. There was a smaller water tank there at the time, so there was enough space here. The opening was wide enough for a couple of animals to pass through without being too tight. Um, now this year I have more animals, so I chose to enclose the lean-to as well. I'm, I'm disappointed that I have to do that because I liked providing them an enclosed space to go in in bad weather and yet still have a lean-to for them to be under, say when it's raining or something, they could still be under here, be dry, but look out. Okay, I, I'm disappointed that I had to lose that for them, but, you know, this is all a work in progress. <laughs> um, something else I would change about this is insulating it. Um, you can see it's just wood with the metal siding. Um, it's on, just like the uh, airflow in the girls' barn is on the bucket list for this place. So is insulating the boys' barn. Um, of course, that's going to help in, in year-round weather. Um, don't have an issue in here with airflow, partly because one whole side is open, but also because we're at the top of the hill here, and in the summer, there's lots of nice breezes. It's actually very comfortable in the summer because they can get out of the, the sun, but they have an awesome breeze. Well... The counter of that is in the winter, there's a lot of breeze when you don't want it. The wind blows up in here and can make it pretty cold, but that's why we, we enclose part of it. Um, advantage of this place is that the ceiling is a lot lower than in the girls' barn, meaning that this barn is actually warmer in the winter than the girls' barn. When you walk in um, to the enclosed part of this barn in the winter, it's a striking difference from outside. And it's because, you know, heat rises, the ceiling being lower in here, you get to live in that warm air um, more than you do in the girls' barn, having those super high ceiling, you know, the warm air is all up there and no one gets to enjoy it. So, uh, boys' barn, I do appreciate that about this barn. Disadvantage to the lower ceilings here, is that in the spring, when we come in here to clean up all this stuff, um, you can barely get a skid steer in here to clean it up. Um, this is built on a hill, so the side I'm on is actually taller than that side. That side, we can't get a skid steer in at all. So, you know, I got to physically clean out everything there. This last year... Um, you know, went in as far as we could, but then throughout the summer, I was raking up little bits of whatever would come up, and it didn't completely get back down to dirt. Like, oh, over here was down to dirt, but not back in here. This ceiling was too low to get a skid steer back in there, even a little one. Um, so if I were to do it over again, I would make the ceiling a little bit higher. Um, I think I'd, I'd rather have the ease of completely cleaning it than providing that little bit of extra warmth in the winter because honestly look at all the fluff they these guys are made for cold weather <laughs> um, they they're I don't know if you knew this but alpaca fiber has been tested to be six times warmer than wool they are super super warm hanging all that stuff off of them so most of them handle the winter very very well um, it's just that I appreciate coming in here when I come to do chores in the winter, that it's a little bit warmer. Um, yeah, so this, I didn't, <laughs> I can hear them out there. Uh, when I planned this barn, I was still new, fairly new to alpaca, certainly new to alpaca design. So I've learned a lot about what I did well and what I did not do well in designing this place. I have a little bit of storage there, which is fine, but nothing is organized. It looks like a mess, and it's, you know, I try to keep things kind of together, but, eh. Um, oh, you can kind of see right in here um, about cleaning out this barn. What has happened is that the last couple years, 
the person that has helped me clean this out with his skid steer has kind of dug down deeper to get to be able to get the skid steer further in and you can see how you can't even tell completely that is probably a foot it's lost a foot of dirt there from what it originally was yeah and on the outside of this because of it on the outside of this we had to put in more dirt because there was actually gaps where the sun was shining in of course that's that's not good oh tip about building a shelter one of the key things is that you want your shelter especially in the winter to not have any drafts that is what is going to make your alpaca cold is the drafts and i'm still ha have a challenge with that because i got this door back here i'm not quite sure how i would do this differently um that's on the north side where i mean you want this if you have a three-sided shelter you want the solid the longest solid part to be where the wind is usually blowing and here it's from the north so that is why that's there and we need to have a people door somewhere um, and simply because of how we have to access the barn it needed to be on that side at one time it was um, not insulated but you know the, the stripping and stuff the weather stripping maybe that's what it is the weather stripping around the door to keep the wind from blowing in was originally on there but as the structure settled I had to take that off because I couldn't close the door and you can see all the lights is shining in that is something that's still on the list to address this year um, but also how the dirt has been washed out from underneath the door yeah those are things that still need to be addressed I try to put stuff like tubs and things in front of that door to help block the draft and the wind coming through but that's something I still have to fix I would say keep drafts in mind when you're designing your structure your alpaca barn you want to minimize that there is an article that I got a number of years ago when I was doing research on alpaca barns. This is before I bought this property. Um, and I was just trying to learn about what alpacas need. And I will link that article down below. I think it's a phenomenal um, kind of way to think about it, where you have a central barn. And then the way that you build out your pastures from that accommodates different age groups and um, times of life and you kind of move your animals around as they mature and change to seasons of life um, but everyone comes into the barn in a central location where you have a place to do your herd health day you know to do your shearing where you have all your tools and your equipment and your resources inside um, all that kind of stuff it's a it's a better a setup than what i have here i actually don't like having the boys and the girls so far apart and I have to have equipment like shovels and pitchforks and that kind of thing. I have to have a set at each place. If, um, say, something happens to a boy here, um, he needs medicine, like he got something in his eye or whatever. I keep all that stuff in the girls' barn because the storage there is so much better than here. Okay, well, then I have to go over there and get that and bring it back. And it's kind of a hassle. I don't like having to have duplicates at the boys' barn. For everything so there's some things I don't like I spray you know I don't know I just don't um, so that's something to keep in mind if you have the ability to have one barn for everybody and you just design your pastures and the way that you flow have your animals flow um, that would be so much easier but um, if you're in that place where you're thinking about it and planning it read that article glean what you can out of it um, ask any questions you have down below um, something I don't have, um, especially at the boys' barn, is a place to easily catch them. Initially at the girls' barn, I had a dry lot area. Uh, just this summer, I took that down because the fencing was just falling apart, and we have to redo it anyway. But I'm having to think about how to design a dry lot area for each group of animals that I have, and also ways to easily catch them. You don't catch an alpaca or llama in an open space, a big open space. You will have a circus and waste your time. 
Um, you need to get them in an, a smaller space. Mm. It makes it so much easier. So um, there's a lot of reading out there for that idea as well. But if you could make it to where you have catch pens um, or a way to take them from larger areas to smaller and smaller and smaller areas, depending on what your needs are, that's going to be so, so helpful. Rounding up my boys to do herd health day, uh, it's a lot of work and it's because I have not designed things to make life easier for myself. I have ideas in my mind, um, but I just haven't brought those things into reality yet. I haven't brought them into fruition. So that's still on my bucket list too, my to-do list for the ranch. Um, so I hope all those ideas were really helpful um, to those of you who are thinking about this. Um, boys are arguing over the bail. It's like, guys, there's enough for everybody. Why are you arguing? so goofy if you have suggestions about shelters or catch pens or anything like that would you just leave a comment and share with all of us um, if you see things here that I can improve or change I'm open to suggestions um, and if you have any other questions that I can perhaps answer or refer you to an answer um, leave a comment down below and I will do my best so until then I will see you tomorrow